All right, what's going on, everyone? We're talking about reduce today. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen too many people try to explain this in in much depth or detail or in a way that I think will make universal sense to a lot of people who are just starting to understand JavaScript. And it is a super super useful method to understand because it can be used in so many different ways. So I want to I want to try to go into a deep dive on on the reduce method. So basically, what is it? It's a it's an array method. So anytime you have an array of data in JavaScript um, and you want to condense that array of multiple items into a single thing, into a single thing. So you take an array and you can combine it into a single array. You can combine it into a single object, a single string, number, Boolean, um, even a single object or array of nested objects. So if we have an array, let's say I have, um, I have some data, it's gonna be a series of numbers, and I wanna use the reduce method on my data, and let's say I want to reduce all of these numbers down to a single, remember we have to think about um, what single thing we want to reduce this down into. So I'm gonna say for now, we want to reduce this down into a single number. So we want to get the sum of all the numbers in this data set. So I'm going to say sum data, I'm going to call reduce on it. And reduce, the call to reduce, this method, it takes in two parameters. So it's going to take in a function, which we can define for ourselves. It can do whatever we want it. We can, it, it can, it can, the sky's the limit for what we want this function to do. Um, but there are some specific things that have to go into how we create this function, which we'll see in just a minute. So this is the first parameter. It's a function. So again, right, this is a call to reduce, which itself is a function. Whenever a function is on an object, we call that a method. So we're calling, we're invoking this object method called reduce and into it, we pass one, a function, and two, we can pass a reference to whatever we want the type of that single thing that we want to return out of this call to reduce to be. So remember, I said that we want to take this array of numbers and we want to reduce it down into a single number. So in this case, I'm talking about a sum of all these numbers. So I'm gonna start my sum out at zero. And this, this value here, this second parameter um, in the call to reduce is going to be a reference to what's called the accumulator. So on every iteration of this reduce loop, right? Reduce itself is a loop. So on every iteration of the reduce loop, we are going to manipulate this accumulator value in some way. Um, the accumulator value, this second parameter in the call to reduce is not actually required. It's an optional parameter. We'll talk about that more later. For now, I'm just gonna initialize it to zero. So now we have to talk about what do I want this function? We call this a callback function. So what do I want this inner function in this call to reduce on every iteration of reduce? which is a loop. So on every iteration of the loop, what do we want this function to do? So there are a few things, there are a few things we have to do here when we write this callback function within the call to reduce. So it has two, this, this function itself, this inner function has two required parameters. That's gonna be uh, a reference to the accumulator, right? So this value here, ACC accumulator, that is just gonna be a reference to this second parameter in the reduce call. So it's gonna be a reference to zero at first, and then as we manipulate it, it's gonna be a reference to whatever that value is as we keep going. And then we're gonna need a second required parameter inside of this callback function. Um, and that is going to be a reference to whatever the current value, whatever the current element is, that we are looking at in that particular iteration of the reduce loop. So we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll break this down in just a minute. Um, so I'm gonna open up this, this inner function a little bit so I have some more space to work with it. 
So what do I want to do on every iteration of this loop? Well, I know that I want to combine all of the numbers in my sum data array into, into a sum, right? I'm summing up these numbers. Um, so I'm going to have to add those one by one to my accumulator. So on each iteration of the reduce loop, I'm going to have a reference to whatever the current element is that I'm looking at. So you can imagine, same as a for loop, we can iterate over this sum data array. And on the first iteration, the current value, the current element that we're looking at is going to be one, right? So we have a reference to one. So what I want to do first time around, right? I just want to, I want to add to the accumulator, whatever current is, right? So first time through, I'm going to add one onto whatever my accumulator is, right? Which, which first iteration it's zero. I'm adding one to it and then so on and so forth. As the loop continues, the next iteration, the next, the next iteration accumulator will be one, right? Because I've added one to zero. The next iteration accumulator will be one and my current value is going to be two, right? Because that's the second value here in my array. So then I'm going to add two to one. That's going to be three. Then I'm going to add three to three. It's going to be six and so on and so forth. We're going to continuously add whatever our current value is into our accumulator value. Now, the only thing that we have to remember to always do here when we have a multi-line reduce inner function, that callback function, whenever we take up multiple lines to actually write the body of that function, we have to remember, and this is just a rule of thumb, you just have to remember, we have to remember on each iteration of the reduce loop to return whatever the current value of the accumulator is out to the next iteration of the loop. So that every time we have a new iteration of the reduce loop, we still have a reference to whatever the accumulator was on the previous iteration of that loop. So now we'll see, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assign this entire expression to a variable. Um, so I'm gonna say, reduced, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say sum. So I'm going to grab the sum. Let's see actually what my sum here is. So I'm going to console log this. I'm using, um, I'm using a, a, an extension called code runner in VS code to see my output and my total sum of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is 28, which is what I expect. So, Let's, let's break this down even further. If I wanted to um, accomplish this same task using a regular old for loop, I could do something very similar, right? I have my, you know, whatever I want to, to um, contain a value is that I'm continuously adding my numbers into that's going to store our sum. Um, I have a loop, right? That's the reduce. And then I have a, a, a return. I have a way to return it. In this case, I'm just assigning it to a variable. So let's do the exact same thing, just using a regular old for loop. And we can kind of compare and contrast, right? So I know that I want to, one, store a variable which will keep track of whatever my sum is. And I'm going to continuously add to it, which means that I'm going to continuously uh, reassign that value, which actually means it's going to need to be a let value. Um, it needs to be a, a mutable, uh, not mutable, actually reassignable value. In JavaScript, that means we need to use the let keyword. So I'm going to define a variable which is going to store our sum, and then I'm going to create a loop. So let i equals zero. It's going to start out at the uh, index zero. It's going to loop over uh, sum data that length, increment i on each iteration of the loop. Okay. So on each iteration of the loop, what do I want to do? I want to add whatever the current element is to my sum. So I'm just going to break out that current element into a new variable. Let's say const um, current equals, this is very similar, right? It's very similar to what we did in the reduce loop. Const current equals sum data at i. That's going to give us whatever the current element is that we're looking at in that particular iteration of the loop. And then I'm going to say, add to sum current. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to want to see actually what 
sum is again right here. So let's clear what my terminal had before. I save and I'm going to run this again. And again, I do see 28 in my output, right? So lines 16 through 20 right now are doing the exact same thing that I did with my reduce method on lines 11 to 14. It's just a different way of writing it. So reduce is a loop. Now going back to the reduce, right? Going back to our original implementation, I did say that this second parameter in the call to reduce is optional. So we don't have to use that explicitly defined second parameter. We, we can choose to omit it. If we choose to omit it, if we choose to not use it, then what the accumulator will initialize to, it will initialize to the first value in the array that you are calling the reduce method on. If you do not explicitly define your second parameter, that accumulator value, it will initialize by default to the first value of the array that you are calling the reduce method on. So in this case, because I am not explicitly defining zero, actually the accumulator is going to initialize to one. And then basically, um, you know, we can, we can kind of extrapolate what we know from there, right? So on each iteration of this loop, um, we are adding onto our accumulator, which initializes to one. Um, if we don't explicitly define what we want the accumulator to start out on, actually then the reduce loop will start on the second element. It will start on the one-th index, the first index, index one. So actually the, the loop will start out on this value two and it'll add two to one, which is our accumulator. We'll get three as the accumulator, then it'll move on to the value three. And it'll add three to three, then it'll add four to six, and so on and so forth. So we would see, the, oh, actually, no, that was, a, that was a syntax error, that's my bad. Um, so yeah, so this is all good here. Um, so we're doing the exact same thing now. Um, if we don't want to um, have a multi-line statement within the reduce call, we can actually define this as a single line statement. Here we are just basically on every iteration of the loop, um, returning out as the next iteration of the accumulator. So we're returning out as the accumulator to the next iteration of the loop, whatever is um, evaluated in the expression accumulator plus current. So the first time through it is returning out to the next iteration of the loop, actually the value three, then it's returning out six, then it's returning out 10. So pretty, pretty interesting stuff here. Um, now going back to what I said about how using reduce, we want to take an array of data and combine it into a single thing, a pattern that you will see a lot, a lot in software engineering is grabbing the amounts of occurrences of elements of, of numbers, let's say. So if I had, again, if I had the same array, let's bring this down here. Um, don't need my file explorer. Let's bring this down here. So if I said some data two, and I have, I have here one, one, two, oops, two, three, three, and maybe four, four, four. Now, if I wanted to grab all of the occurrences, so the amount of times that each number occurs in this array, and I wanted to, I wanted to end up with something like, um, there are two occurrences of one, there are, there's one occurrence of two, there are two occurrences of three, and there are three occurrences of four. So if I wanted to create an object like this. Remember, we can, we can use reduce to create a single thing. So in this case, we want to create a single object of occurrences. We can do that pretty easily. We can do something like some data to reduce. Remember, we have our callback function. It takes in a reference to the accumulator and a reference to whatever the current element is. Let's break this out. And that second parameter is going to be initialized to an empty object, which we are going to continuously build up. So in order to 
create uh, an object of occurrences of each element. What we need to do is we need to loop over each element in the array and we're going to check does this element already exist as a key on the object? If so, we're going to increment how many times it has appeared. If it does not already exist as a key on the object, we need to create a key on the object for that number and we need to initialize its amount of occurrences to one, right? Because that's the first time that we would have seen that number. So I'm going to say, if, if we have not seen, right, if this particular number in this particular iteration of the reduce loop, right? Because reduce is a loop. So if this current number does not already exist as a key on the object. So if I, if, if, the object, which is the accumulator in this case, right? If it does not have property for that, whatever the current element is that we're looking at, then I need to create that key on the object and I'm going to initialize it to one. I'm going to say else. So else, right? If it already does exist as a key on the object, I'm going to reference that key and I'm going to increment its corresponding value. And then again, remember the other thing that we always have to do with a multi-line callback within the reduce call, we always have to remember to return the accumulator. Okay. So again, let's set this equal to a new variable. I'm going to say uh, object and let's console log the object again, using code runner here in VS code. And so we see one, two, two, one, three, two, four, three. 